gonna win. Cause we will hit all game. We are motivated. We are dedicated. Come on now. Come on now. We will win. Cause we are the best on the field. Then we hit the field like all day like all night like on the blue light. Offense like defense like this call like house call like and it sound like and it sound like and it sound like Welcome to the Short Sports Show. I am your host, Daniel Short. Today is Wednesday, June 29th, 2016. And thank you guys for joining us on the show. I have a jam-packed show, that's for sure. And I have some amazing, amazing, amazing news. Absolutely amazing. All thanks to you guys. Um, I, I don't even know where to begin. First off, how was everybody's week? I hope you had a great week. Uh, obviously, <clears throat> allergies are still a problem. Uh, no, I've uh, it's it's been you know it's been a good week in the sports world. It's been a bit of a sad m- a month overall. We've lost uh, what five or six amazing uh, individuals who have transformed the sports world, have broken barriers among barriers, and, and just created a foundation for so many athletes, uh, whether you recognize it or not. Uh, They've had such an amazing impact on their respective sport. Um, Obviously, just this past week, we've lost uh, Pat Summit, former University of Tennessee, great head coach, and Buddy Ryan, uh, who arguably, I mean, he kind of had a bad reputation on the field when coaching, but he did transform NFL defenses and uh, and did a pretty good job at it. And uh, overall... Um, a very good person. So, and if all if you haven't seen the thirty for thirty yet on the nineteen eighty five Bears, which first of all, if you call yourself a football fan, you haven't watched it. Don't call yourself a football fan, and you need to go watch it. That way, you can regain everything you lost because it is a great, great thirty for thirty. They always do a good job with these shows, uh, with these documentaries, and that one was another one that talks about Buddy Ryan and some of his uh, his, his last moments. Um, so some amazing news that I can now officially talk about, uh, it's been somewhat in the works. Uh, it's just, I I couldn't say anything at first because of obviously getting it all done and waiting for everything to be settled. Uh, the short sports show will continue to remain on all the platforms you listen to right now. Spreaker, Stitcher radio, iHeartRadio, um, iTunes, YouTube, and we're getting more back into YouTube. Because of the fact that I've now signed a contract with BBTV, which is a uh, one of the big YouTube networks, and they have a <clears throat> excuse me a new program that now talk it's it's called the NBA Playmakers, and what that is is that I will be able to um, during the off season talk you know do obviously do my NBA stuff and obviously we're gonna get much more in depth about the NBA. Uh, throughout the, every week, every show we're going to do. But now we will be able to upload highlights, talk about it, uh, obviously you know, talk about Kevin Durant and, and his stuff, do everything normal, but <clears throat> be given more opportunities with uh, going to games and some of the marketing things and as well as uh, having highlights, having video of the NBA and, and so on and so forth. It's it's a really cool thing. I, I know it sounds uh, kind of vague when I say it, when I explain it, but trust me in that you will see much more content on YouTube only. Uh, obviously, we'll still talk about the NBA here on the show as normal, but to get exclusive content on the NBA, go to the YouTube channel of mine. The link is in the description no matter where you're listening to. It is the Short Sports Show on YouTube. It will start starting next week. We'll start doing some things 
and uh, and then just get into it. Obviously, the season already ended, but it's getting ready for obviously next season. But that is a big news. It's big time news. Uh, I'm excited. It, it's a lot of great things have been happening over the past uh, several months. The past couple months, it just came out of nowhere. God has truly blessed me. I'm excited, guys. Um, and the show is just going to continue to get better. It is. We're going to have more guests on the show. And I'm excited. So, and again, it's all thanks to you guys because you guys continue to listen to the show. You guys continue to uh, share it with your friends and family. It means a lot. Gives me these opportunities to put, produce more content for you guys. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. And as always, before we get started talking about college football, as we always do, uh, we will play another thing that I forgot to actually mention. Obviously, Intergrind, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, start opens July 9th, so be ready. Set your plans for Houston, Texas. Uh, Intergrind, the website is down below. They sponsor the show, so please go check them out. Uh, Michael Rackpo is a great guy, and w- even if you're not in the Houston, Texas area, well, you know, I, it, it's summertime. If you want to take a visit down to Houston, I highly recommend doing it on July 9th, which is a Saturday be there for the grand opening. It's going to be exciting. He's going to have uh, multiple NFL players that are there, as well as he's going to be ready to train y'all, uh, as, uh, as well as his other trainers. It's going to be amazing. I will be hopefully making it. It's getting to a time crunch here. I, I plan on being there and doing a vlog for the whole thing, uh, but it's only going to be on YouTube only, and you guys got to go check it out. But Be there, and if you're not, if you cannot attend, and if you cannot, if you're not in the Houston, Texas area, it's not a problem. He has fitness and nutrition plans. He's got workout and nutrition plans for you. He's got them ready for you. So if you're not in the area, he's going to send them your way. Personalized. It's not just something that you just, I will do 30 sit-ups and 30 push-ups and eat right. No, 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 no. It's personalized head to toe for you based on your uh just who you are. He's got it ready for you. St- plan starting at 6.99 a month. Check it out. And the last thing which I have ads for it are t-shirts. We have the Short Sports Show t-shirts on Teespring. Now I've been trying to find a website and if you guys know a better one, let me know. <clears throat> I've been trying to find something. I'm trying to even find stuff in my local area to start printing uh, a bigger mass of them. Uh, I know we don't have that big of an audience, but uh, I want to start selling shirts. I love having my own type of shirts. Uh, I don't really wear that much uh, other type of shirts other than really like Nike shirts, but I want to have my own shirt that you guys can buy. Right now, we have two designs on Teespring. Uh, One is actually being uh, looked at because I had to get, uh, obviously, I have to get people's, uh, the companies, iTunes, iHeartMedia. And stuff like that. I had to get their approval for using their logo on the shirt. I got majority. I'm waiting on one more. Uh, but I have two different types of t-shirts. One is Make Sports Radio Great Again. It's my favorite shirt. I designed that one. Uh, it's 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 an awesome one. It's got me with a beard that I do not have. But I am working on. I am working on. Go check them out. They're on Teespring. I'm trying to sell 50 of them. You guys have about 19, 18 more days uh, to go out and buy them. Because they're only up for that uh, amount of time. The more they sell, the longer they stay up, the less they sell. I only have that amount of time left. I've already bought two of each for me and my father. Um, and hopefully you guys can buy some as soon as possible. They're only $19.99 a shirt. And we got other shirts. We got uh, other types of shirts. We have long sleeve, which it's summertime, so I don't know why you buy one. We got a tank top version for both men and women. Check that out. And we also got a jacket to get you prepared for the winter time. Check it out, Teespring. And, uh... It's going to be exciting. Here we go. Today's show is sponsored by Intergrind. Based out of Houston, Texas, let former Texas State linebacker Michael Rackpo help you reach your fitness and nutrition goals. With plans starting at $6.99 a month, why not be a part of this rising program? Whether your goals are to lose weight, gain muscle mass, find the right off-season program, or even for you ladies out there to get that booty blast, you can do it all with Intergrind. Not in the Houston area, not a problem. Intergrind has a program that is personalized just for you. Intergrind has everything you need to meet your personal 
and healthy goals. NFL linebackers like Titans Brian Arakpo, Chiefs linebacker Derek Johnson, Oakland Raiders defensive back DJ Hayden. I, I mean, the list goes on and on, ladies and gentlemen. Panthers linebacker David Mayo and Buccaneers running back Charles Sims, along with many other young athletes, have already begun. Find your personalized workout and nutrition plan at intergrind.com and call 832-475-2829. Again, that's intergrind.com, 832-475-2829. Unleash your inner grind. What's up? I've got some amazing news. You can now buy the short sports show apparel on Teespring. That's right. I have two different designs up already, and they're amazing, and I love them, and I know you guys will love them too. Hurry now as these shirts are only up for a certain number of days, and then they're gone. My goal is to sell at least 50 of each design, and the more they sell, the longer they're available. So help me make that happen. Teespring is a platform that makes it easy for anyone to create and sell high-quality products that people love with no cost or risk. So go to www.teespring.com slash stores slash the short sports show today and after you make your purchase tweet the show for a chance to be on the following week's show with me now back to the show two days after being released from his national letter of intent to attend baylor espn 300 offensive lineman jp your has found a new home he's ranked the number 164th ranked prospect in the class of 2016 and he committed to texas on Saturday afternoon after making an unofficial visit with his mother earlier in the day and signing a financial aid agreement. Now, he was the 17th ranked offensive tackle in the class that was one of five players who signed with Baylor on February 3rd and were released from their commitments following the suspension and firing of Art Bryles. Now, that came days after Devin Dernvey, number 42 overall prospect in ESPN 300, Signed with Texas on Thursday. That's two of them. But also, Devin has a younger brother, Donovan, who's a defensive back. He signed with Texas Thursday as well. So three former Baylor commits, and obviously have been released from their uh, national letter of intent, have now committed and will play football this fall with no missing of year eligibility, which is fine, which is good for them. They will now go and play for Texas. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, who else we got? Uh, Patrick Hudson and Cameron Martin and cornerback Paris Cobb also released, uh, released, uh, re- excuse me, re- received, released from their national letter of, of intent. Hudson made an official visit to Oklahoma this weekend. I haven't heard anything on that. If he decided to sign uh, to Texas or, or, excuse me, to Oklahoma, he might go to Texas too. Uh, Cameron Martin, the running back, he committed to Auburn. He took visits to both Auburn and TCU and decided to go with uh, Auburn. Paris Cobb is also waiting on. Uh, Wide receiver Jared Atkinson, he had requested a release but decided to stick it out and stay with the Baylor Bears. Um, You know, Devin and Cameron Martin, both of those guys were considering TCU and it was kind of just a bad timing situation, not because of this whole situation being late and when they get to campus, none of that. It's just TCU has about 12 to 16 wide receivers on the team, and I'm not joking. They have that many. So I knew there was a good chance we weren't going to get Devin because we have a lot of great, you know, a lot of really good wide receivers. So playing time is going to be hard to come by, especially coming in late into uh, summer, summer camp. So and with Texas, they don't have that much depth. They definitely don't have the same depth as we do. So he could immediately go, you know, and play for Texas, which is, you know, a, a big thing to a lot of players from the state of Texas. Then you have Cameron Martin. Another thing, we have about four to six running backs on our roster. I really like Cameron Martin. I thought he would be, a, a you know, a really nice complete back for us. But at the same time, I knew he wasn't going to get any playing time because of the guys that we have right now that are much better. So I knew it was going to be kind of a loss to ha- not have those. I would have liked to have Patrick Hudson uh, or some of the offensive linemen. Maybe, maybe Paris Cobb, that would be nice. But I haven't seen anything on them going to TCU, taking a visit or whatnot. So I don't know. Sucks, but hey, at least they're out of Baylor. 
except for Jared Atkinson. Good luck, bud. Uh, Arizona State and Oklahoma State have agreed to a home and home series for the twenty two, uh, excuse me, twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three uh, years. The school announced Tuesday the Sun Devils will visit Stillwater in twenty twenty two, while the Cowboys will make that trip to Tempe in twenty twenty three. It'll be the fourth and fifth meetings between the programs, and Arizona State has won two of the previous three. The last meeting was in nineteen ninety three. A 12 to 10 victory for the Sun Devils. Uh, Arizona State also scheduled Texas State, uh, I believe, in 2021 or 2025. I don't know. It's way out there, but I'm glad Texas State uh, actually put a big school. Too bad it's several, several years from now. It's not like they have a a schedule that's booked up until then. They could have easily scheduled them for like 2018, 2019, but whatever. I don't make the schedules. Uh, also, Penn State and Auburn, they're going to play a home-and-home home series in 2021 and 2022. First game will be in Penn State uh, and then going to Auburn in 2022, which should be a pretty exciting series depending on how those two programs are in that time. The most interesting news in college football that happened is because it's it's a guessing game, and if you're a betting man, which I am not, this is going to be a fun game for you. Now, Kellen Mund is the number two ranked dual threat quarterback in the, and the number 49 prospect in the class of 2017. And he committed to Texas A&M over Auburn on Monday night. Now, he originally committed to Baylor in June of 2015 over Auburn before reopening his recruitment on June 1st. Now, this is where it gets fun. Munn's verbal commitment makes it the fourth straight class in which the Aggies will sign a four-star quarterback that follows Kyle Allen, Kyler Murray, and Nick Starkle. Both Allen and Murray have transferred out. They both transferred out in December, the same month. So who's next? You know, you had Kenny Hill who really started it. He transferred. He's at TCU. Kyle Allen going to Texas uh, or Houston. Kyler Murray at Oklahoma. Nick Starkle, who knows? Kellen Mund? Could he be the next guy? Could he be the next guy that goes to A&M for a season and then transfers out? That's what I'm thinking. I mean, he's got to, you got to, someone's got to keep it going. I mean, he's already, he can't make up his mind. He was, he was committed to Baylor. Obviously everything happened. That's fine. Thinking about Auburn, he obviously really likes Auburn. But nah, he he was like, no, nah, I'm gonna stay in Texas. I'm gonna go to A and M. Did he transfer to Auburn in 2017, 2018? Just throwing it out there. I like to poke fun at the Aggies, and it'd be really funny if he does end up transferring from there. Now that was really it for college football. Majority of our news is in the NFL and in the NBA. Start off with the NFL, as always, of course, and former Detroit Lions All-Pro receiver Calvin Johnson announced his retirement in March after nine NFL seasons, and he hasn't spoken about it or publicly since the retirement when he had the little note. He didn't do a speech. He just had he sent that little note. Um, on Saturday, he had a camp, uh, the Calvin Johnson Jr. Foundation Catching Dreams football camp, And he talked about it for the first time, quote, I know everybody wants to know why I retired, but it's more so I put a lot into the game and it's taken a lot out of me. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm not getting into specifics of things that is uh, that it has taken away, but it definitely feels good. I guess I could say for myself just to spend time, spend more time around my family. My son just got married. Things are going good right now, end quote. That's what Calvin Johnson had to say, and I don't understand why people really need a reasoning for why he retired. He gave us years of excitement. Obviously, he gave years and years of hope to the Detroit Lions because, man, did they ever, did they need it. And, you know, he, it's not like he played for, you know, five or six years and said, ah, just not feeling it. I got to go. He played nine years. I mean, what else do you want? He's not. I mean, we don't need every top 
you know, elite player to play 12, 14 years. Is it, is it fun? Yeah, until you start seeing their uh, production start to decline and, and things like that. And then you're just you, – you're left with – memories of the old past instead of oh remember what he did last year remember when he was still playing good calvin johnson retired it's fine i I understand people are gonna miss him i'm I'm gonna miss watching his big his big highlights and uh top catches that he made and uh just the person he was on the field because not a lot of elite players like calvin johnson those type of players Stay clean the whole time. And I'm not talking about drugs. Well, I'm talking about that too, but just not getting in trouble. And he was one of the few to just stay clean and not have anything on him, which is great. It, it sets uh, a, a standard. It sets that not every player, want, you know, changes. And so, yes, we'll miss him. But he's doing great things. And you got to just be happy that he's around his family. He got married. You know, let's be happy about that. Let's be happy and not keep asking him, are you coming back? When are you coming back? And why did you retire? It's over. Get over it. It's fine. That's it. The the sad thing that the, that it's not done is this. The Green Bay Packers linebackers Julius Peppers and Clay Matthews and Pittsburgh Steelers linebacker James Harrison are going to be interviewed by the NFL after they were named in the Al Jazeera America report linking them to performance-enhancing drugs, according to a letter obtained by ESPN. Aldofo Birch, the NFL Senior Vice President of Labor Policy and Legal Affairs, wrote that the league will meet with the three players at the start of training camp. The Packers open camp July 26th, while the Steelers begin on July 29th. The NFL wrote that it is attempted since early April to schedule interviews with the players saying delays caused by the NFL Players Association have, quote, obstructed our ability to conduct and conclude the investigation, end quote. The league said it would first notify the players about the investigation in January. Now, obviously, the big name that's missing from all of this was a guy who was really somewhat well, supposedly involved in it. Now retired quarterback Peyton Manning was the highest profile name linked to the PEDs in the Al Jazeera America documentary that aired in December. It alleged that Manny was given a supply of human growth hormone in 2011 from an Indiana-based anti-aging clinic. Manning was not mentioned in the NFL letter, but a source told USA Today Sports that the investigation is still progressing. Charlie Sly, a man identified as a pharmacist who allegedly spoke to an undercover reporter working for the network, later recanted his story. James Harrison, I don't know if you guys have seen some of his, follow him on Instagram or, uh, oh, Patrick Hudson, guess what? He just committed to Texas. We were just talking about Baylor earlier. He has officially committed and will play for Texas. That is four former Baylor players now signing with Texas. Wow. Wow. Anyways, back to the uh, real story here. Uh, James Harrison is a big guy. I mean, he's a big dude. He's, he's, right? Uh, I would not want to make him angry. And the NFL has made him angry. Roger Goodell has made him angry. I don't even know if Roger Goodell's completely involved in this. I'm assuming he would be. James Harrison is angry. He's mad about this and doesn't want to be involved in it because he's like, I didn't do anything. Well, that's to be figured out, but I would not want to make him angry. The NFL has done that, and Julius Peppers, Clay Matthews can't be happy about this either. More will come once uh, this stuff gets started on July 26th and July 29th to find out, which uh, is one month from now. But, man, this is not good. I really hope none of these players did it because I like all of these guys, but it wouldn't surprise me that any of these three players actually did something. But the fact that I know Peyton is not playing anymore, but the fact that he's just kind of like, eh, we don't even want to talk about him. And it's if it's part of an investigation, you think you would at least talk to him to say, all right, what did you know? What happened? Instead of just completely letting it slide. But whatever. It's cool. That's cool. Pay man gets off. All right. As always, uh, an attorney handled. And I know we've said we never talk about Johnny Manziel unless he was dead or in jail. But I read the story and I had to get it on the show because 
to just imagine what Johnny Manziel's father is going through and has gone through is somewhat heartbreaking. At the same time, it's like, why wasn't this sooner if you saw the steps? And also, damn, this just really, really sucks. An attorney handling Johnny Manziel's domestic violence case expressed doubts that the he- about the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback's ability to stay clean in a lengthy text message accidentally sent to the Associated Press. I don't know how you accidentally text the AP when you're a lawyer. I think it was kind of intentional. I think he just wanted off because this was, you know, a, a no win situation. And maybe he just wanted to get something off his chest because I, I don't I've never accidentally. like well, OK, I have accidentally texted someone, but it's very rare. And you kind of know who to stay away from when you're texting someone. I think you would just rather call them. But you send a text to AP, and I mean, unless you have this, that person has the same name as the person you're trying to text, kind of a. But why were you texting them earlier in the first place? Okay. Anyways, and Manziel's father told ESPN that his son is a quote druggie who needs help. End quote. Now, defensive attorney Bob Hinton's text that was the guy who texted. Uh, indicated that Manziel's legal team was seeking a plea deal with prosecutors, but suggested that it could be tricky. Quote, heaven help us if one of the conditions is to pee in a bottle, end quote. Meaning, meaning that this guy still has drugs in the system, and if they force him to pee in a bottle and test for drugs, it's all but over for Johnny Manziel. Uh, and it's not a surprise. If you've seen some of the... Photos of Manziel now. I've completely unfollowed him from everything. It's all social media, completely unfollowed. And but from the last picture I saw, he was on the street with some some guy. Uh, forgot what it was. Some party, whatever. Uh, he looks very skinny, very skinny. I mean, he wasn't always like the biggest quarterback, but he also wasn't the skinniest quarterback. And he looks pretty skinny now, which only means sniff, 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 sniff. You know, that usually what it results from. Uh, Let's see. Paul Manziel, this is where it got really crazy. He told ESPN's Josina Anderson that he wants his son to get well, but the quarterback has to do that for himself. Quote, he's a druggie. It's not a secret that he's a druggie. I don't know what to say other than my son is a druggie and he needs help. He has he just hasn't sought it yet. Hopefully he doesn't die before it comes to before he comes to his senses. That's all. uh, That's all. Jeez, I'm screwing this all up. That's about all you can say. I don't know what else to say. Now, Manziel's father was asked to discuss the intervention efforts the family has made on their son's behalf over the years. Quote, you have no idea. And the system failed. I had him in rehab and he escaped and the doctors let him go. And that's the whole other story. So, I mean, I had him in rehab and the system failed. It didn't work. He has more money than me, so he can outrun me. Like I said, there are two things that are going to happen. Either he's going to die or he's going to figure out that he needs help. It's one of the two. But we've done everything that we can do. Life goes on. You can't just chase somebody that's not willing to listen. The story is not going to change. It's the same. That's crazy to think that a father has to go through that. It's mind boggling. It's my boss. Manziel's father feels the family has virtually exhausted all possible ways to help their son. Quote, we're so far past that. That was years ago. We're so far past what everybody thinks we are past. People are ignorant. It's just a horrible story. That's all there is to it. I mean, I hate to say it, but I hope he goes to jail. I mean, that would be the best place for him. And then Paul Manziel said that he doesn't want to talk about his son's situation any longer. Quote, I'm done. I'm done talking about it. I'm doing my job and I'm going to move on. If I have to bury him, I'll bury him. That's the fact. So if not, if he calls me and needs help, I'll go get him. Until then, he's on his own. I've done everything I can do. There is nothing else I can do as a father. Nothing. It is what it is. He's a druggie and everybody needs to accept it. Man, I don't know about you, but that is... That's crazy. That's crazy. And 
And after I read this story, and my dad had read the same thing, I asked him, I was like, obviously he's a father, I'm not. And so I asked him, I was like, you know, not that he, he could he envision himself doing this and being in this situation, but I asked him, you know, how would you handle it if, if it was me or something like that? Which I, I've never done drugs, never will, but I just, I asked him, you know, because I wanted to hear another father's reaction to all of this because I, I just, when I think of this and when I read this, what Paul Manziel said, it's just, it's crazy that someone can, and it's not his fault, obviously, because of what's all happened, but it's it's crazy that someone can just think this and say it and truly feel it because they've, they've felt like they've done everything. And they might have he might have done everything he can. But I wanted to hear, you know, someone else's opinion on another father's opinion. And if, if you're a father and listening to the show, I would love to hear your opinion. Tweet me at Short Sports Show uh, on Twitter uh, or on Facebook, The Short Sports Show. Or if you're listening on YouTube, whatever, just comment wherever you, you're listening on. But it's just, I don't know. So I asked him and he said, you know, that he was basically right. Other than he would have, he thinks that he could have, uh, not that he was better than him or anything, but that there had been signs earlier back in college uh, and maybe even high school back when he was at Kerrville, which isn't too far from where we are. Um, he remembers his, his recruiting that maybe there could have been uh, a little bit of signs along the way, and maybe they just kind of pass him off for, uh, you know, a boy being a boy, a young man, whatever, uh, just being a kid or whatever. Who knows? But it's it's pretty interesting, this, you know, to hear that, and it's just, it was crazy. It's crazy. So i like to hear what you have to say if you believe that you could have said the same thing and what your reaction would be to all this if you were in this situation. But uh, I think what struck me the most was if I have to bury him, I'll bury him. But if not, if he need if he calls me and needs help, I'll go get him. It's, it's like he's, he just said, like, there's nothing else I can do. I've done everything I possibly can. I put him in rehab and they allowed him to walk out. He's got more money than me, so he can outrun me. You know, I got to face the facts that I can't do anything else. I can't text him all the time. I can't keep calling him to tell him, hey, you need help. And just have to wait and see what life takes uh, and goes on and says, got to bury him. I'll be the guy to bury him. If he needs help, if he accepts it, I'll be there. <sighs> we'll have to see. But I just wonder who the idiot was that was talking about how, the, how Manziel. I mean, it was just a flat out lie. Uh, and I think a lot of people picked up on it, but now we know for sure it was it's just been a flat out lie that Manziel has been preparing for a comeback either this fall, this upcoming season, or next season. I mean, whoever that lawyer is or attorney or whatever, I would never want him for anything because I know there are some lies when it gets into court dealings and whatnot, even though you're not supposed to, it just it happens. I do not want that person, man or woman. I do not want that person who straight up just told everybody he is preparing for the NFL season and, and, and getting the contract. He has not been preparing in any shape or form to get back in the NFL. Even if there was a crazy team that would say, yes, we would take him. He has not been preparing at all. I do not want to hear that he has because he hasn't. If he's a straight out druggie, I guarantee you he's not practicing. He's a, drug he's a druggie. That's it. That's all it is to it. It's just crazy. Uh, apparently, I forgot that we have two other stories that's kind of similar to the situation. Uh, we got two other idiots here. Uh, free agent NFL quarterback Tavares Jackson, who is trying to get a contract with the Seattle Seahawks to be back to be a backup quarterback. He's facing a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after allegedly threatening a woman, a.k.a. his wife, in Florida. Uh, and according to an arrest report first obtained by, man, some of these news stations, WESH, W-E-S-H-2 News in Orlando, Florida, Jackson was staying at a vacation home in Rejo Oaks Resort and returned to the unit drunk around midnight Friday. He kicked an upstairs bedroom door, according to the arrest report, uh, and began yelling at the woman who went downstairs to grab a knife. It keeps saying woman. I could have sworn it was his wife. I thought Seattle Times put something up that said his wife, but we'll go by this report. 
The woman told police that Jackson followed her downstairs, grabbed a handgun out of uh, a bag and pointed it at her saying, I'll kill you blank. I'll kill you. Jackson told the deputies he reported the who responded to the incident that there was no gun in the, uh, in the rental car, I'm guessing. But a gun and uh, but a gun and container of marijuana were found on the kitchen counter, according to the arrest report. He was booked into the county jail and posted bond later Friday. Yeah, you're about done. You're about done. You're about done. Um, and also, this other idiot, Jacksonville Jaguars linebacker Dan Scudda, uh, was arrested and charged with a misdemeanor first degree battery for an incident in Orlando. Man, Orlando is just getting all the crazy people. Uh, on J- June 19th, the Orlando Police Department uh, told ActionNewsJackson.com that Scooter pushed a woman's faith, faith, <laughs> face, quote, with an open hand into a glass window around 2.30 a.m. Uh, Scudder, according to police, had alcohol in his breath and bloodshot, bloodshot eyes. Uh, he faces potential actions from NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell, who updated the league's domestic violence policy in 2014. And the policy calls for a six-game suspension without pay for the first offense and possibly a lifetime ban for a second offense. Well, Tavares Jackson and Dan Scudder, good luck. Good luck. That's all I can say. Uh, former NFL head coach, of course, and we talked about this, uh, an influential defensive coordinator, Buddy Ryan, Passed away yesterday, and he was only uh, 82 years old. Um, it sucks. But I think the greatest quote that came out of all of this was from former Chicago Bears defensive tackle Steve McMichael, who told ESPN on Tuesday, quote, I wonder who just lost their defensive coordinating job in heaven. That is the best quote for anybody passing away. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it was perfect. Buddy Ryan's going to be the defensive coordinator of heaven. I like it. I like it. Uh, obviously, I was not alive to um, watch Buddy Ryan's defense. Um, but from watching history, reading, and um, obviously more documentaries have, have happened, um, watching those and seeing what Buddy Ryan was like, Pretty crazy guy, a uh, pretty crazy coach, but he had the 46 defense. He led the NFL in seven categories during the Chicago Bears Super Bowl winning season in 1985 after setting an NFL record with 72 sacks in 1984. And the 85 team was third in the NFL with 64. That's crazy. That's awesome. Uh, before we get into our main topic, uh, the five questions for we're doing this new series. It's um, Top five questions for each division. This week we are doing the AFC West, and we will have that right after we take a quick little break and talk to you about Teespring. What's up? I've got some amazing news. You can now buy the short sports show apparel on Teespring. That's right. I have two different designs up already, and they're amazing, and I love them, and I know you guys will love them too. Hurry now as these shirts are only up for a certain number of days, and then they're gone. My goal is to sell at least 50 of each design, and the more they sell, the longer they're available. So help me make that happen. Teespring is a platform that makes it easy for anyone to create and sell high-quality products that people love with no cost or risk. So go to www.teespring.com slash stores slash the short sports show today, and after you make your purchase, tweet the show for a chance to be on the following week's show with me. Now, back to the show. Today's show is sponsored by Intergrind. Based out of Houston, Texas, let former Texas State linebacker Michael Arakpo help you reach your fitness and nutrition goals. With plans starting at $6.99 a month, why not be a part of this rising program? Whether your goals are to lose weight, gain muscle mass, find the right off-season program, or even for you ladies out there to get that booty blast, you can do it all with Intergrind. Not in the Houston area, not a problem. Intergrind has a program that is personalized just for you. Intergrind has everything you need to meet your personal 
and healthy goals. NFL linebackers like Titans Brian Arakpo, Chiefs linebacker Derek Johnson, Oakland Raiders defensive back DJ Hayden. I mean, the list goes on and on, ladies and gentlemen. Panthers linebacker David Mayo and Buccaneers running back Charles Sims, along with many other young athletes, have already begun. Find your personalized workout and nutrition plan at intergrind.com and call 832-475-2829. Again, that's intergrind.com, 832-475-2829. Unleash your inner grind. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the show, but I want to say first off, thank you for all of your support. Without you, I'd just be some guy talking to a microphone. And I got some amazing news. I recently joined Patreon. And in case you're wondering, Patreon is an amazing way for you to earn some sweet rewards by supporting the Short Sports Show. I promise you, you will love the perks and your support will help build this show. Go to www.patreon.com slash the short sports show and view the amazing rewards you would get directly from me to you by donating to the show. The link is in the description, so when you have some time, check it out. And again, thank you for listening and supporting the Short Sports Show. Now back to me rambling on about something. The top five questions for the AFC West. We are doing this brand new series where every week on every show, we will do the top five questions for each division. This week, it is the AFC West here on the Short Sports Show. First question, how will Ken Wisenhut step up the offense for the San Diego Chargers? Now, only two offensive coaches returned in 2012 in an overhauled coaching staff and a revamped offensive system that had quarterback Phillip Rivers release the ball earlier and taking what opposing defenses conceded. Now, Rivers was sacked 30 times compared to 49 the previous year and threw for 4,479 yards, 32 touchdowns, while tying a career high in a 105.5 passer rating. The reason we talk about 2012 is in the 2013 season is because that's when Ken Wisenhunt was there before he left for becoming the head coach at the Tennessee Titans. And San Diego's rushing attack also improved the prior season uh, from the prior season's 1,461 yards and 3.6 yards per carry. That tied second worst in the league to... 1,965 yards and a four-yard average. Although they were speculated to have a poor, disappointing season and getting off to a shaky start, the Chargers finished in the top eight of overall standings. Rivers was named the NFL Comeback Player of the Year. Keenan Allen broke out to the national scene as a rookie sensation, breaking multiple wide receiver rookie records. And then that's when Wisenhunt left at the conclusion of the season to become the head coach of the Tennessee Titans. He is now back with the San Diego Chargers. And taking up this offense that, well, once again, failed rushing. They had, uh, what, four total rushing touchdowns last season with rookie and first-round draft pick Melvin Gordon having a big goose egg. So now Ken Wisenhut steps in and has to transform this offense back to what it used to be. Thing is, I am not liking what the Chargers did with the draft and free agency to address the offensive side of the ball. Offensive line, if they could stay healthy, can real can be a really stable offensive line, with, especially with Ken Wisen up being at the head coach, or excuse me, at the offensive coordinator position. He should put in the plays that best suit this offense. Melvin Gordon is a, a talented running back. He is a first round running back. He's not a bust, but I'm not gonna put all the blame on him, and I'm not necessarily not going to blame him for the lack of progress or whatever you want to say performance of last season Philip Rivers cannot do this on his own the receivers are not there for the charges Keenan Allen is not a number one receiver on any team sadly that's exactly what he did what he is for the San Diego Chargers Chargers need more weapons I they get it they got Hunter Henry to, to at some point take Antonio Gates spot when he's gone possibly next year But that can't be it. You can't rely just on a target. You can't rely on him being the next Rob Gronkowski because there might not be a next Rob Gronkowski. You need some more receivers. The Chargers do not have that, or at least consistent receivers. This is going to be a problem. 
How will Ken Weidenhut step up this offense for the Chargers? Well, doing the things that we just talked about. Finding the right offensive system that's going to work for these uh, offensive linemen and the players that he has. Is it going to be a huge jump in uh, progress and performance? Possibly not. Possibly not. As a Chargers fan, this sucks, but you know, management hasn't really done the best job with this team. And they're wasting Phillip Rivers' window for Super Bowl is very, very small now. Next is, will the Oakland Raiders defense be more consistent? Now, the Oakland Raiders, they lost five of their nine games by less than a touchdown last season in 2015. That shows hope, but it also shows the lack of consistency with their entire team and not being able to close out games. With the addition of multiple defensive stars in the offense, or in the offseason, excuse me, there's a lot of potential, a lot of hype that the Raiders could have a stellar defense in 2016 with a multiple clickbait articles that say, can the Raiders' defense be like the Broncos' defense? Obviously, Khalil Mack will continue to pressure uh, the opposing quarterback, and Bruce Irvin is going to make a great compliment on the other side. DB is a question due to health and overall lack of play. But I believe the Raiders can find a niche on that defense to be more consistent. And I don't think they're going to have nine losses next year. Possibly go 10 and 6 next season. Maybe even 11 and 5. I think the time for the Raiders being in the, in, in the, in the cellar is not going to be much longer. I think it's done. I think they're out of the cellar. They're in the living room right now. And they're trying to get out. out. Okay. Terrible analogy. Whatever. I believe the Raiders would be more consistent defensively and find some type of groove because you know the offense is going to do its thing. Derek Carr, Amari Cooper, the running back rotation that they have, offensive line getting better, the accusations, uh, not the accusations, uh, but the additions they had to that offensive line is going to make the team better and maybe find another receiving target would have helped, but hey, they might be able to get some things done. Next question. Can Alex Smith lead the Chiefs to the promised land? Now, the Chiefs went through a poor start the first six games of the season as they were 1-5 and five and they lost their star running back in Jamal Charles to a torn ACL in his right knee during a 18-17 victory, or excuse me, loss in week five at home against the Chicago Bears. So it looked like everything was gone for them. Everything was done. They were just going to be way at the bottom. Would they even win another game because they've lost some really bad games? But in week 16, you fast forward to that, they had just won their ninth consecutive victory. And with the Baltimore Ravens defeating the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Chiefs clinched the playoff berth their second in three years. So he's, Alex Smith has taken them to the playoffs each time in two of the past three years and has made some steps, but they could never get over the hump. They, they lost the wild card spot, and then I, what, they lost it? Didn't they lose it? No, that wasn't division. It was wild card against the Colts. That was a crazy game. But last year, the Chiefs defeated the Houston Texans 30 to nothing for their first playoff win in 22 years. The following week, they were defeated by the New England Patriots 27 to 20. They were close. They were there. Alex Smith threw for 3,486 yards, 20 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. The timing is now for the Chiefs, or else that window will close soon. Alex Smith isn't getting any younger. The defensive star players aren't getting any younger either. It's going to come a time where contracts are going to come up. We already had the situation, Tom Bahali and Justin Houston. It'll happen again. And then you already have a star in the making at defensive back. Uh, but the guy, of course, I can't remember his name. <laughs> when this, I'm making an important video and I can't remember his name. Uh, the guy from UW. Yeah. I can't. 22. Uh, he, you know, the contracts are going to come up for him in another, what, three years from now. Chiefs timing to win in the playoffs is now. I think they can get it done. 
but can they get over the hump? Can they beat the Patriots? And most likely, could they beat them on the road? Could they beat beat them in Foxborough? I don't know. I don't know. What will the Broncos be like in 2016? The offseason thus far has been dominated by quarterback controversy following the retirement of Brock, uh, excuse me, Peyton Manning and Brock Osweiler. Manning's backup during the past four seasons has signed with the Houston Texans as a free agent. Mark Sanchez was acquired in a trade with the Philadelphia Eagles, and the Broncos selected Paxton Lynch during the first round of the draft. Now, Sanchez and Lynch and second-year quarterback Trevor Simon are expected to battle for the starting quarterback position during the offseason and preseason, but is it gonna, who is it going to be, and could these guys get it done? Now, a lot of people are optimistic about it, saying this offense is going to fit any of these quarterbacks, that even Trevor Simon could be the starting quarterback and lead this team to the playoffs, which I highly disagree. I disagree that I, I, I don't disagree that this offense can fit the quarterback, but do I believe that any of these three quarterbacks can lead this Broncos team to the playoffs and win multiple playoff games? No, not at all. Not at all. No, thank you. No, sir. No, ma'am. Not at all. But who gives them the most upside? Obviously, Lynch. Is it smarter to sit him under Sanchez? Absolutely. Because you know if Mark Sanchez is benched at the beginning of the season, he is not going to help Paxton Lynch in any way. It's just going to be a terrible locker room situation, and that is the last thing the Broncos need right now as they just started what could be a pretty good, and I'm not going to say dynasty or franchise, but could start setting some big things in the movement. So, Obviously, Trevor Simon, just shut up. Sit down. Paxton Lynch, take the clipboard, learn this preseason, learn this season, and take next season, you know, 2017, as your way to start. No need to rush it. You also have Super Bowl MVP Von Miller. Will he actually sit the entire 2016 season because he doesn't like several million dollars guaranteed? He wants more. Will he actually sit out because of the contract situation? I don't believe he will, but we've seen crazier things happen, and, well, people are just greedy nowadays. Positives about the Broncos is I like the running back rotation they're going to have. They kept Ronnie Hillman. They kept C.J. Anderson, both returning. But in addition to that is Devontae Booker, the running back out of Utah that they selected in the uh, second or third round. Or fourth, I don't remember. They select him in the draft. And before he got hurt, he was a very dynamic player, catching out of the backfield, rushing. He was a exciting player. He was, he was even uh, isn't a Heisman hype early in the season when Utah was undefeated. I really like Devontae Booker, and I believe he's going to bring something very interesting to this running back rotation. Uh, obviously, the Broncos will uh, have most questions unanswered hit, heading into the 2016 season. But will they quickly be figured out? Well, they, they will be quickly figured out, for better or worse, when the season kicks off. Also, I like Braylon Addison. He's an undrafted free agent at Oregon. Uh, he should be exciting to that wide receiver position. The slot next to uh, Emmanuel Sanders should be interesting. Um, finally, the last question is, who will win the AFC West? We're going to make our early predictions now, our preseason predictions right now and i'm going to say that the kansas city chiefs will win the division now i don't believe no i did i did i don't know if the camera can see it up there i got this on youtube i have the kansas city chiefs then the oakland raiders the denver broncos the san diego chargers in that and i know a lot of people can say oh no the broncos are still gonna win they still have a great defense Uh, you know they just Different quarterback. Pay didn't even play that well. I get it. But the Chiefs are getting better. The Raiders are getting better. Chargers, I mean, they sucked last season, so they can only get better, I would hope. Broncos, on the other hand, we are, they are what they are. They are what they are. So that is leading the question now to you to let me know who you believe We'll win the AFC West in 2016. Will it be the Denver Broncos repeating? Will it be the Oakland Raiders getting their first winning season? Or will it be the Kansas City Chiefs?
because I know it's not the San Diego Chargers, so I'm not even going to bring their name up. But let me know in the comment section down below as we continue on with the show. Thankfully, my camera lasted. I was afraid the battery was going to die. Uh, let's see. Seahawks quarterback Trevon Boykin, sad news, uh, has been charged with assault, steaming from his late December arrest during TCU's trip to San Antonio for the Valero Alamo Bowl. According to Bexar County Online Court Records, Boykin has been charged with assault causing bodily injury, which is a misdemeanor in Texas. The charge could result up to a year in jail, and hopefully it does not because right now he's in line for the second-string quarterback position with the Seattle Seahawks. His arrangement has been set for August 1st, so we shouldn't know then uh, what's going to happen. Now, I'm not going to talk about it too much into the story because we've talked about it before, but he was arrested on December 31st after a late-night incident near a bar in San Antonio, and because of that, he was suspended for the Alamo Bowl before going undrafted during the 2016 NFL Draft. Now, good thing is, his agent, Drew Pittman, indicated a statement in, to the Seattle Times that Boykin's current charge came as a result of a deal with authorities. Quote, Trevon has already agreed to terms with authorities on a lesser charge. He has been accountable and remorseful from the beginning. Uh, Trevon is looking, for, for, uh, looking forward to training camp starting July 30th and competing for the roster spot. Now, the Seahawks signed Boykin as an undrafted free agent and gave him a $15,000 signing bonus, which was the highest out of any and all undrafted free agents this year and is, uh, I believe, in the past years as well. General Manager John Snyder said that at the time that, uh, that the reason Boykin didn't get drafted was because of the incident at the Alamo Bowl. That's what he believed. Obviously, Tavares Jackson remains a free agent and is an option for the Seahawks to, si uh, to sign, but he faces charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after a woman in Florida accused him of threatening her last week that we just talked about. So I think he's off the list. I don't think he's going to be on the list anymore. Um, also, the Seattle Seahawks, they have signed wide receiver Doug Baldwin to a four-year extension that will keep him through, uh, with the team through 2020. And uh, it, the deal is worth $46 million total with a guarantee of just over $24 million. And he absolutely deserves it because of what he did. Um, one thing I didn't know, I didn't know Doug, Dougie B. I didn't know that Dougie B was 27 years old already. I didn't know. I mean, he's still got several years to play, but ee, I don't know he's that old. I thought he was only like 25. Mm. Yeah, I, I, that was the highest I would I would have gone. 25. I thought maybe 24. Uh <clears throat> excuse me. He drafted he was excuse me, joined the Seahawks as an undrafted free agent in 2011 and obviously had a monster season in 2015, setting career highs in catches with 78 and yards with 1069. Bal uh, Baldwin is also tied for the lead league league lead. I'm getting dyslexic here guys. Uh with 14 touchdowns. Seattle coach Pete Carroll said earlier this month that the team was working with Baldwin's agent on a contract extension, and voila, it happened. Well-deserved. Last bit of NFL news before we move on to the NBA. And Hall of Fame linebacker Mike Singletary will work with the Los Angeles Rams defense this season, returning to coaching after a two-year absence. Uh, now, head coach Jeff Fisher hasn't defined a role for Singletary, who is likely to be an advisor to a defense. And Singletary was with the San Francisco 49ers as their head coach from 2008 to 2010, going 18 and 22. And a linebackers coach for Minnesota Vikings from 2011 to 2013 before sit, uh, spending the past two years out of coaching. So a good, uh, could be a potential good deal for the Los Angeles Rams having Mike Singletary with the Los Angeles Rams. It should be nice. Now, before we go to the NBA, of course, check out Intergrind. Today's show is sponsored by Intergrind. Based out of Houston, Texas, let former Texas State linebacker Michael Arakpo help you reach your fitness and nutrition goals. With plans starting at $6.99 a month, why not be a part of this rising program? Whether your goals are to lose weight, gain muscle mass, find the right off-season program, or even for you ladies out there to get that booty blast, you can do it all with Intergrind. Not in the Houston area, not a problem. Intergrind has a program that is personalized just for you. Intergrind has everything you need to meet your personal 
and healthy goals. NFL linebackers like Titans Brian Arakpo, Chiefs linebacker Derek Johnson, Oakland Raiders defensive back DJ Hayden. I, I mean, the list goes on and on, ladies and gentlemen. Panthers linebacker David Mayo and Buccaneers running back Charles Sims, along with many other young athletes, have already begun. Find your personalized workout and nutrition plan at intergrind.com and call 832 832- 475-2829. Again, that's intergrind.com, 832-475-2829. Unleash your inner grind. Hey, guys, sorry to interrupt the show, but I want to say first off, thank you for all of your support. Without you, I'd just be some guy talking to a microphone. And I got some amazing news. I recently joined Patreon. And in case you're wondering, Patreon is an amazing way for you to earn some sweet rewards by supporting the Short Sports Show. I promise you, you will love the perks, and your support will help build this show. Go to www.patreon.com slash the short sports show and view the amazing rewards you would get directly from me to you by donating to the show. The link is in the description, so when you have some time, Check it out. And again, thank you for listening and supporting the Short Sports Show. Now back to me rambling on about something. What's up? I've got some amazing news. You can now buy the Short Sports Show apparel on Teespring. That's right. I have two different designs up already, and they're amazing, and I love them, and I know you guys will love them too. Hurry now as these shirts are only up for a certain number of days, and then they're gone. My goal is to sell at least 50 of each design. And the more they sell, the longer they're available. So help me make that happen. Teespring is a platform that makes it easy for anyone to create and sell high-quality products that people love with no cost or risk. So go to www.teespring.com slash stores slash the short sports show today. And after you make your purchase, tweet the show for a chance to be on the following week's show with me. Now, back to the show. The Los Angeles Lakers plan to uh, aggressively to pursue Miami Heat center Hassan Whiteside, Whiteside, excuse me, uh, when NBA free agency starts, according to league sources, Lakers like the Heat are hopeful to securing a face-to-face recruiting meeting with the Oklahoma City Thunder star Kevin Durant once free agency begins at 12:01 a.m. Eastern time on July 1st, to be exact. But the Lakers sources say that are highly intrigued by Whiteside and what he could bring them as a double-double presence inside. Should be interesting. Now, after a- averaging 14.2 points and 11.8 rebounds and a league-leading 3.7 blocks per game last season, Whiteside is expected to command a maximum contract with a first-season salary forecast just around the range of $22 million that first year. Yeesh. Yeesh. That is crazy. Uh, one thing I forgot to talk about uh, was the fact that uh, apparently this is news. Adidas has signed with Kanye West to now make Yeezys uh, part of their brand. Don't know how exactly that's going to work, but they're ma- going to make the shoes and the apparel and all the other good stuff. It's all going to be Adidas now. I, when did Adidas sell out? I, I thought we were just signing athletes here. And I know Nike went with you know Kevin Hart, but... Kevin Hart, you know, respectable. Kanye, yeah, you got about three good songs, and that's about it. I'm not a Kanye fan, sorry. Just not. If that if that makes you hate my show, I'm sorry. It's a pretty dumb reason, but I'm just saying. Uh, Kevin Durant, this is the big dog everybody wants to talk about, and we're about to squash some rumors right now. We're about to squash them right now and let you know what the real deal is because there are a ton and a ton, and I just don't want you to support it. There are a ton of clickbait and money bait uh, ads and articles. Basically, what that means, uh, in case you're unfamiliar, they will post anything and everything just about every hour or every other day. Uh, Something about Kevin Durant or anything that's major to get you to read the article, and it'll have nothing of valuable information in it. It'll just be everything you already know. And or just fake rumors because they want you to come to the website because they get paid when you come to the website. So don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Kevin Durant is scheduled to meet with the Golden State Warriors, San Antonio Spurs, the Oklahoma City Thunder, Miami Heat, Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Clippers. 
beginning on July 1st, the first day free agents are allowed to talk to uh, with teams other than their own. Now, the Vertical reported Tuesday night that those meetings will take place Friday and Saturday in the Hamptons on Long Island. Sources told ESPN that the list of teams that get to pitch to Durant directly will grow before, M- uh, obviously, the NBA free agency f- officially begins. But the list of confirmed suitors is those. So everybody else that you see is like, oh, well, maybe this team will sign. Or there's a report. It will say report. And then it'll say the article of Kevin Durant to possibly meet or wants to meet or this team wants to meet with Kevin Durant. Just just don't. Especially like the 24-7 sport ones. Bunch of money bait articles. That's, that's all they want you to do is just to click. But anyways, let's get on with the nitty gritty here. Obviously, the Warriors and the sport and the Spurs, sources say, are pl- both planning to load a plane of full key organizational figures, including Stephen Curry and Clay Thompson for the Golden State Warriors, and Greg Popovich and Tim Duncan for San Antonio. They're gonna fly to talk to Durant, see what he what, what he likes, what's come to what could happen with if he joins. Uh, along expected to sit alongside Durant at those meetings, obviously his agent. Rich Kleiman, and selected family members and friends. Now, the reason I believe it is smart for Kevin Durant to go play for San Antonio is I'm a Lakers fan, by the way, and of course I would love KD to come to the Lakers, but guess what? Not going to happen. If he can't win with the Thunder, it definitely cannot win with the Lakers right now, which I'm glad we got Brandon Ingram, by the way. I haven't said that on the show. I was happy. Uh, the reason I want him to go to Spurs, I believe it's the best, is who they have. Because you think about the Warriors, they're going to have to let go of multiple free agents. Harrison Barnes, gone. Azili, gone. Andrew Bogut, or, and or Andre Iguodala, gone. I mean, it's just going to be Steph, Clay, and Durant. And, and as we've seen many, many times with multiple teams throughout many decades of basketball, Sometimes all you need is a big three. But with the San Antonio Spurs, not only would he be a part of a big three, it really would be a big team. I mean, think of the potential starting lineup. Tony Parker. Uh, Guards are going to switch. But at forwards, you're going to have KD, LaMarcus Aldridge, possibly at center, Timmy, Timmy D., and also, you got, oh, actually, well, you have Kawhi Leonard at forward, so maybe LaMarcus goes to the center and Tillman has to sit on the bench. But you can have Kiwi Leonard. I like to call him Kiwi, but Kawhi Leonard, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Kevin Durant. Yeesh. Yeesh. With multiple other players, Parker, possibly Ginobili, you're going to have Timmy. Patty Mills, maybe, depending on what they can do. They're trying to keep Boris Diaw, but I doubt that happens with if Kevin Durant goes. But you're going to have an organization that knows how to put players together that fit the scheme and will fit the key stars. Everybody else is, all right, well, this is our big three. That's it. They don't have compliment guys or guys that are at least consistent enough. The Spurs, each one of them are consistent and fit and play well with one another. Why wouldn't you want that? And to learn and play from Tim Duncan his last year, most likely, if he comes back and play, why not? Why not be a part of that? While you go to the Warriors, you have Steph, who's very young. You have Clay, who's very young. And you would have yourself and Kevin Durant. That's it. That's it. The other guys aren't going to compliment as well as a Spurs staff would. No disrespect. I know I'm going to get hate from a bunch of Warriors fans. I like the Warriors. I was rooting for y'all to win. But that is just, that's the deal. At some point, Clay's going to want a new deal. Will Steph want a new deal? That's just going to cause a whole bunch of controversy with that team. San Antonio, you're not going to have to worry. Kiwi's got a deal. LaMarcus has his deal. KD, come get yours. That's what I would like to see. That's what I would like to see. Uh, other teams that are hopeful of getting an opportunity, and this is what you need to listen to most because this is it, and 
all the other fakes, you know, the articles, just not going to happen. The Knicks, the Lakers, they, they want a meeting too. Heat have it. Boston has one. Clippers have one. The Knicks and the Lakers, they don't. One source has already said that Houston is completely out. The Houston Rockets are out, so no articles about those. Those are out. And Washington is actually more unlikely than most people think, which shocked me, honestly. I really thought they could be the dark horse here. I get it. He wants to win. And if he can't win with the Thunder and with Russell Westbrook, there's not a good chance he's going to win with uh, John Wall and the Washington Wizards. But I really believe that he would want to go back home. He saw what LeBron did and went back home, won a championship. And he talked about it not that long ago that he wanted to go back home with Washington and and win, win one for them. So I was thinking that the the Wizards would be a, a much higher suit. At least get at least get a a meeting with them. That hasn't happened, and it will most likely not happen. There's a better chance that it won't happen. So that that shocked me a lot. Uh, and and again, the Lakers who have really wanted to schedule a meeting with them, they're not abandoning their hopes, but they are looking elsewhere. You know, of course, because they they know it's you know, not a good possibility. Uh, the Lakers intend to obviously contact him and his representatives on July 1st. And one source said, quote, I can't imagine Durant wouldn't talk to us. That would shock me. End quote. In addition to the Lakers, the Atlanta Hawks and the New York Knicks are hoping to meet with Durant as well. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be one of the craziest ones we're going to see out there since really LeBron when he was a free agent. Um, but I think that one was kind of more predictable. This one, he really could go anywhere. He could go to the Warriors. He could go to the Spurs. He could go to Miami. He could go to Boston. He could go to the Clippers. He could even just stay with the Thunder. He There's so many options. There's really not even a percentage of, all right, this team is, is better. You know, It's just opinion-based, really. That's all you're going to hear from every reporter out there. There's no one that truly knows where De- Kevin Durant's going to sign other than his agent and Kevin Durant himself. And maybe not even his agent, just Kevin Durant himself. So that's that's where it stands right now. And it, that's where it's going to be until July 1st, which is two days from now. And he, he might take his time. It, it might be until two weeks from now when he decides to sign somewhere. And, he, and he's a smart guy. He's going to take his time with it, too. Uh, Cleveland Cavaliers point guard Kyrie Irving has accepted his invitation to play for Team USA in the summer's Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro. Irving, the MVP of the 2014 Basketball World Cup, averaged 19.6 points per game and 4.7 assists for the Cavaliers this season. The 12-man squad features Irving, Clay Thompson, Jimmy Butler, Ky- Kyle Lowry, DeMar Rosen. Uh, Kevin Durant, Car- Carmelo Anthony, Paul George, Draymond Green, and Harrison Barnes at forward. And uh, DeMarcus Cousins and DeAndre Jordan at center. So it's going to be exciting to see uh, that. They are obviously said that, hey, we understand the Zika thing. We're talking to uh, the CDC, taking precautions, and basically just watch out. Uh, what else we got here? Um, we're going to skip that one because that one doesn't matter. Uh, I guess we'll talk about it. Toronto Raptors shooting guard DeMar DeRozan does not plan to schedule meetings with other teams at the start of free agency, opting to focus on working out a contract to return to the Eastern Conference finalists. DeMar DeRozan, a 26-year-old, a two-time All-Star who led the Raptors with thir- 22, uh, excuse me, 23.5 points per game, Last season has been consistent in stating that his strong preference is to remain with the only franchise he's ever played for in his seven-year NBA career. Now, the Raptors can offer the Rosen a five-year maximum contract worth $153 million with the salary cap at a projected $94 million. Other teams would be able uh, to offer him a max deal of $114 million over four years. Obviously, more money in one more year with the Toronto Raptors. Uh, the uh, Philadelphia 76ers intend to make a serious push for the Golden State Warriors restricted free agent Harrison Barnes when the NBA offseason marketplace opens on Friday. 
Uh, 76ers have Barnes high on their list of potential targets and know the Warriors will not be able to retain them despite their right to match any offer Barnes gets if Golden State manages to win the Kevin Durant sweepstakes. The Warriors, however, rate keeping Barnes as a top priority in the event they are unable to lure Durant away from the Thunder. And I wonder how Barnes feels about that. It's like, you are our top priority only if we can't get KD. That That's really it. I mean, other than that, you know, deuces. Yeah. Uh, a four-year max deal with, for Barnes would cost the Sixers in excess $90 million, but Philadelphia must spend more than $40 million before the, se- the end of next season to reach the league's projected salary floor of $80-plus million. Uh, last but not least, let's see. Uh, obviously, LeBron James, he's, uh, he's not going to e- exercise his player option with Cleveland for next year, which was going to be about $24 million next season. Uh, it could be because, A, obviously he's going to re-sign with Cleveland, but either A, because um, he wants less money, which I highly doubt, but we could possibly see because he wants to continue to have a team to win championships because he was like, damn, this team barely won it. I need more talent around it. So he might want less money, or he might say, I kind of want a little bit more because he can't get more. I think he could get up to $27 million, uh this season. So... We'll see about that. Tim Duncan, he decided to opt into his $5.6 million contract, but he's still undecided about whether to return for the 20th NBA season. Manager Nobly also, uh, you know, he opted out. Who knows what he's going to get. The Spurs, they want to keep Boris Diaw, uh, even though it, they could save $4 million if they cut him. So we'll have to see about that. And also, the GM, or who was it? Was it GM? Someone of San Antonio Spurs said that the long rumored interest in Memphis Grizzlies free agent guard Mike Conley has been overstated, that they're really not that into him. Uh, I know that the report came out yesterday that Paul Gasol, his main priority is to sign with the Spurs. So even if the Spurs can't get Kevin Durant, there are a lot of young play- there are a lot of good players that want to sign with the San Antonio Spurs, and having Paul Gasol there would not be a bad option with or without Tim Duncan. Would not be a bad option. The Atlanta Hawks and Boston Celtics are first known teams to secure face-to-face recruiting meetings with free agent big man Dwight Howard. Uh, Howard, who is 30, is likely to meet with as many as five teams in free agency, with the return to Houston Rockets widely seen as unlikely after Howard declined his $23.2 million player option for next season. The Miami Heat, sources said, have not yet booked a meeting with Howard in free agency, but could emerge as a more serious contender uh, if you know, it goes on a little bit later. That could be interesting. That could be interesting. And that is the end of the show. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed. I had a blast uh, recording this with you guys, talking to you guys. Remember, Teespring. You guys can go to get the t-shirts right now on Teespring. Link is in the description down below. Uh, It's just www.teespring.com teespring.com slash stores slash the short sports show and you will see the two uh different designs they are awesome you guys would love them it would help support the show of course because guess what it spread the word and they're awesome shirts they're not just like some random shirt says hey i listened to the show they're really cool funny shirts and i think you guys would love them i'm excited the thing about them is you won't get them till the campaign ends so that way, you know, Teespring doesn't print, you know, random orders. It's, it's, it's smart business for them. It just sucks that you got to wait. Um, but if you know any other T-shirt places, I'm looking some locally uh, to start, you know, selling or working out a, a partnership or something with them um, because I would definitely want to print more shirts and get them out to you guys. Stay tuned. Follow me on Twitter at Short Sports Show. Become a fan on Facebook, The Short Sports Show, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Guess what it is? The Short Sports Show. Whether you're listening on YouTube, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, iTunes, whatever it is, thank you guys so much for listening. Be sure to share it with your friends and family. Also, support the show on Patreon. Be, uh, have a chance to uh, actually come on the show. And also, if you buy a t-shirt, tweet it at me after you purchase it uh, and let me know. And you have a good chance of being on the show. I got an interview next week with a guy who is very, very smart in uh, analyzing football. Uh, He has a YouTube channel as well. 
be on the lookout for that on my Twitter. I have an interview with him coming up, and it'll be on next week's show. Also, we have our top five questions for the NFC West. Uh, that'll be on next week's show as well, and as well as any other news. Stay locked into the YouTube channel. Over a million people have viewed the, sh- uh, the show. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. I love every single one of you. Thank you guys. As always, God first. God bless. He's truly blessed me with this show and with you guys. I will see you guys next Wednesday morning. As always, I'm out. Peace.